how we just fly sort of fireball there. That's not only is there fragmentation and shrapnel in there that can damage the aircraft's surfaces. If you lose that engine, you don't want to be ejecting, especially over something that you've just bombed or shot. In this gameplay, like he's shooting way more missiles than we could ever carry in the aircraft. The F-35, B and C actually don't even have an internal gun. You will receive kind of, uh, as you say, like missile alerts or stuff. It's going to be displayed a little differently in the aircraft if the aircraft's able to identify it. Hi, I'm David Greger, call sign Bronzino. I've been flying military aircraft for about nine years, mainly the F-18E Super Hornet and the F-35C Lightning II. Today we're gonna to take a look at Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown. I've never played this game before, so let's take a quick look at it. Okay, so they're flying the uh, F-35 in a non-low observable or stealth uh, configuration. You can see it by the, kind of the external weapons on the wings. And then if you're looking at the uh, right side of the display here, you can see kind of its SMS or stores management system where you can see kind of the displays. And it looks like a B or C model. It's doing a, a drogue tanking where it has a basket coming out of the back of the uh, tanker. And this was a lot easier than it kind of appears in real life. So he's refilling off a KC-10, which is an Air Force tanker. And it's gonna be a little bit more difficult and that's gonna depend on various different conditions with the weather, kind of any turbulence that's happening. And it's usually not that simple. You're not gonna have all these aircraft in this close formation uh, kind of as you're doing that as well. How often do you need to refuel and when do you refuel? Refueling is going to be based on a couple things. It'll be based on kind of the length of the mission along with what type of mission. So different throttle settings in the aircraft are going to lead to different fuel flow. So you'll run out of gas quicker. If you're down at sea level or at the surface and your maximum afterburner or the, kind of the highest power setting of the aircraft, you're going to run out of fuel in about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so watching this, you can see he's going uh, ridiculously fast. The aircraft is not flying anywhere. Uh, I think we're showing up to 2,000 knots. Uh, he's also flying at a really, really low altitude. So for like various things, there is terrain masking where, uh, especially for uh, masking radar, where you'd like to be down low, but uh, generally we're gonna be up high for a couple different reasons. It's mainly gonna be driven by the tactics and kind of what kind of mission you're executing. The two main things we'll reference in the aircraft in terms of speed will be uh, knots, which is just the kind of aeronautical term for how we measure speed. There's equivalent uh, to miles per hour. Uh, I forget what the exact, kind of conversion is, but if it's gonna be like 600 knots, would be 700 miles an hour. Sweet, so you can see shooting the missiles and firing the gun, those usually are gonna incur at different points. As we talked about, his airspeed's ridiculously fast. He's at a low altitude. If he's getting shot out like this, uh, especially by anything that's a gun or anti-aircraft, it's gonna look to be up at altitude. You're gonna minimize or just completely avoid by getting outside of their capabilities. Uh, you're also not gonna be looking to press in this close to targets. There's various considerations uh, such as like fragmentation. So if you uh, drop a bomb, when the bomb explodes, there's now shrapnel or fragmentation that's gonna be bursted up at altitude. So you're gonna look to have a standoff and that's gonna be actually weaponeered uh, prior to the flight for what weapons you're carrying. So you'll have a minimum altitude that you're not gonna dissemble below. So you essentially don't shoot yourself down uh, unintentionally. Like how we just fly sort of fireball there. That's not only is there fragmentation and shrapnel in there uh, that can damage aircraft's uh, surfaces, but jet engines, especially compressor blades, don't like anything that's not air flowing through there. It's gonna start to hit the compressor blades and you can essentially, especially in a single engine aircraft, uh, if you lose that engine, you don't wanna be ejecting, especially over something that you've just bombed or shot. You can also see on the bottom right of the screen, uh, kind of his missile loadout or his overall weapons that he has on board the aircraft. And like, especially in F-35 uh, with the internal weapons bay, pretty limited, or at least compared to a traditional fighter in terms of, of what we'll be able to carry in terms of inventory. He has external weapons on the aircraft, which is gonna increase his RCS or radar cross section. So it's gonna make you more apparent on radar, easier to pick up. So if you're in an actual combat scenario, uh, you're not gonna have external stores on the aircraft or external weapons hanging off the wings. Instead, you'll go into the uh, situation with just weapons in your internal weapon bays to be more survivable. Again, we do have some air surface weapons that he's shooting that are rocket guided mainly in the F-35, anything that we are conducting an air surface attack is not gonna have a rocket motor on it. it looks like you're shooting like an AIM-120 or AIM-7. First of all, we don't carry the AIM-7 in our aircraft, and then AIM-120 
is going to solely be used in an air-to-air -air role to shoot down other aircraft. It's not going to be used in a um, kind of air surface engagement. In this gameplay, like he's shooting way more missiles than we could ever carry in the aircraft. The F-35 B and C actually don't even have an internal gun. And uh, looking at this, I can't really see if it has a gun mounted on its belly, but that's what we have to do. Uh, the A model does have an internal gun, but the amount of bullets we carry, you're going to be out of bullets in four to five seconds of trigger squeeze, not this kind of running, uh, shooting, especially even when you're not putting it at target. See, so one thing you can see is on the bottom left, it looks like a kind of like a mini map or a moving map. It's not going to have the fidelity in the game as it does in real life. We do have a moving map in the aircraft, and we have two data links or information sharing. If everything is working, everybody's in the data link, you will see uh, friendlies pop up on your moving map, and uh, they are able to pass some kind of target information. Uh, along on the map. You can also, in your heads-up display or your helmet, you see boxes around the aircraft that are flying right now. While it's not going to identify the aircraft, like the Apache that's showing there, it can identify it as a uh, friendly foe or unknown, and it'll change potentially from a square to a circle or diamond, depending on how it classifies that aircraft. So we talked about here, especially like if the aircraft are very fragile, especially some of these low observable aircraft like F-35 or F-22 where you don't receive damage warnings, especially if you've been hit, you don't know essentially what's been hit in the aircraft. And in a single engine fighter, there's potential now that you're gonna have some kind of engine trouble where you don't have the ability like you would in a F-15 to shut down a motor and uh, return home on that single engine, especially out of enemy territory, but you're climbing up to altitude, just the plane is able to glide somewhat if the engine is lost. You will receive kind of, uh, as you say, like missile alerts or stuff. You will actually receive that on the aircraft. If the aircraft picks up a missile launch or a missile in the air, it's going to be displayed a little differently in the aircraft, but uh, you will potentially get a warning if the aircraft is able to identify it. You would never fly this close uh, to a target you're shooting at. Like A, they're shooting back at you, and like B, there's potential again to fly due to fragmentation, and there's really no reason to. Like you're not going to be employing gun normally against a concrete structure, reinforced uh, structure or something like this. If you're in some kind of like World War III scenario or some extreme scenario like this where you're attacking something, you'll have an ARL or accepted risk level. And the higher that risk level is, then you're willing to maybe accept damage to the aircraft or potentially losing an aircraft if the mission is deemed worthy enough uh, in order to do so. Something would be like the Doolittle raids during World War II, where they were literally willing to lose aircraft in order to bomb uh, Japan. A-10 is more of an attack-style aircraft. Uh, again, this airspeed is like absolutely ridiculous. It will carry external stores on the weapon or on its uh, wings. Uh, A-10 is not designed to be low observable. It's designed solely for an air surface uh, attack role or in close air support. You will get condensation building up if you're flying through rain. Clouds are literally just water vapor. If you're just flying through clouds, you shouldn't be getting uh, that kind of buildup of water. But yeah, if you're flying through rain, you will get kind of build up on the canopy. Do fighter pilots use clouds for cover like this? So you can fly through the clouds. It's not going to do anything to defeat a radar signature, but it can match your IR signature. If you're potentially getting targeted from an uh, infrared air, air missile or an air surface missile. Again, now that infrared seeker head has to look through the water vapor in the clouds, so it's gonna mask you a little bit. The other way that you could potentially use it is if you're in BFM or basic fighting maneuvers or dogfighting, so if you think like 1v1 air combat, again, that's visual. You are trying to gain a radar lock to employ weapons, but in order to see the aircraft and fight your aircraft the best way, you need to maintain visual contact of that aircraft. So if they send it to the clouds, well, you're not gonna be able to see them. They're also not gonna be able to see you. So it's a trade off there. Especially if you're at low altitude like this in a mountainous uh, region, not gonna normally be flying through clouds uh, like this. You now risk the potential to run to a mountain and literally crash the airplane. Some of the newer aircraft, like the F-35, uh, and actually the F-16 has as well, we have an auto GCAS, or auto ground collision avoidance system. What that will do is it'll actually, if it um, senses an impending impact with the ground, it'll actually, uh, the computer software will automatically recover the aircraft and fly the aircraft away from the ground. I mean, he's getting really aggressive down low here, which might be uh, what you need to do in a combat situation. However, kind of getting shot at with the cloud layer, with the various like pull-up cues, or now he's got a warning or massive warning in his HUD. These are all like factors that are gonna make like just elevate this risk so high, especially like 
as he's flying through the weather here, you don't know what's on the other side of the cloud. You just flew through. It could be rising train or another mountain that you're just going to now fly into. So you can see he's going through just a various list of aircraft here from the uh, F-104, so uh, really old aircraft through like some more modern stuff from the F-14, which has been retired uh, from at least the U.S. Navy service. It's still in service with Iran. And kind of as you see on the right side of the screen, all aircraft are going to have various pros and cons. So for an A-10, you can see it's, at least in this scenario, looks to be better at air ground than air air, which is going to be accurate. Again, it's designed for an air surface uh, or air ground employment scenario, close air support. For an F-16 or an F-2, which is the Japanese uh, version of the F-16, it's going to be a more of a multi-role fighter now, so you'll see be a little bit more balanced than what a uh, F-104 would be. Like now we're looking at the F-15. So it's F-15C, a solely air-to-air -air, uh, fighter. Uh, so it has a zero air ground capability. So it's kind of reflected in its specifications here where air-to-air -air is bumped up higher than air ground, and that's gonna be for the F-15 uh, specifically. Now this looks like the F-15E strike eagle. So uh, what you can tell from F-15C is now it's two seats. So you'll have a weapon system operator or WIZO in the back seat who's gonna run various systems on the aircraft, whether that's its targeting pod, radar, et cetera. Those are able to be controlled from the pilot, but uh, now you have a dedicated person in the back. And then F-35C, uh, Lightning II, this is the aircraft that I currently uh, fly. We have three different variants of the aircraft, the A model, B model, and C model. Uh, that's gonna be the carrier version, uh, mainly flown by the United States Navy. C model is gonna have the beefed up landing gear to be able to take off and land from aircraft carrier. It's gonna have the uh, probe for its area of fueling uh, that we saw earlier. And then this is the Rafael, gonna be used by France. They'll have uh, an actual, a carrier version flown off the Charles de Gaulle. If you just wanna make a quick like comparison, it would be like the French uh, equivalent to like F-18. The Typhoon or Eurofighter, this is gonna be exported throughout Europe. Again, a multi-role fighter. You can see again, it's not low observable. It, it's got actually really powerful engines, so aircraft's gonna have really good uh, speed, which is gonna allow it to perform better in BFM or 1v1 uh, dogfight in. All right, so that was my review and thoughts on Ace Combat 7. Overall, pretty arcadey game. It's not gonna be too realistic in terms of aircraft speed, the altitude that you're flying at, or just kind of the overall aircraft performance. But just like in real life, uh, shooting missiles, dropping bombs, shooting the gun are fun. So I can understand where they're coming from there in terms of just giving you more stuff to do. If you wanna watch more videos, head to the Gameology YouTube and Facebook pages. Take care. So you can see here that he's shooting missiles uh, really, really close to his target. In real life, you're gonna avoid this at all possible. You can see him literally flying through the fireball here. So now you potentially fly through your own fragmentation, potentially now make that aircraft unflyable.